memory. My mother lightly tapping on our bedroom window in the middle of the night to help me and my two sisters crawl out of the known comfort of our chaotic home and into a world where there was no more threat of physical violence, but the more subtle and unseen type of othering that would have me at war with every part of myself for the next two decades. We fled our military bubble where all the houses were the same, the salaries were the same, and racial diversity was actually the norm, and ended up in a world of sameness where I wasn't part of that same. Funny thing about our thoughts, even if we are unaware that we are having them or holding them, they are still so powerful that they can move us into action. In other words, our unconscious thoughts could still dictate our behavior. Scary, huh? My dad truly thought that he was marrying a quiet, delicate, submissive woman <laughs> who would tend to all of his needs, including his need to be right, waited upon, and treated like a king. He literally used to call himself the king. And to us, he was. He was charismatic, funny, life of the party, but also dealing with his demons. My mom is, in fact, small, delicate, beautiful, the epitome of kind. But I've seen this woman turn her eyeballs red intentionally. And for good reason. She was caught up in supremacy culture. She was expected to do more of the labor. She didn't have access to money. And she was on the receiving end of my father's rage. In the years leading up to divorce, something changed within her. She started to feel again. See, when you're in situations that are detrimental to your mental and emotional well-being over long periods of time, our automatic reactions to difficulty, flight, fight, or freeze, become our patterns of behavior, keeping us stuck in a loop of suffering. When we think we can't change the world around us, we get passive. We numb out with distractions, we stop caring, we become apathetic. What is seemingly a negative attitude is actually our body's wisdom, saying, I'm in a toxic environment, I'm gonna play dead so I don't have to work so hard. We inadvertently cultivate this attitude of apathy within us by avoiding discomfort and being overly concerned with being nice. My mom was ready for change, full of rage. She gave him opportunities, he kept violating, and then she was out. Her emotions demanded more of her, not of him. When you are no longer afraid of discomfort and you're done playing nice, it's like a veil is lifted. You get clarity, and with that comes confidence. But for me, <laughs> I had to disconnect to my emotional self to assimilate to the predominantly white culture around me in order to get that sense of belonging. I would tone police and gaslight myself out of my senses and out of my power. It was like, my internal system of suppression, doing its thing, trying to keep me comfortable by ignoring pain. On the downside of power, as we were, as poor, black, Japanese girls with one single immigrant parent, feeling othered was the norm. I wanted clothes from Tilly's that we could not afford. <laughs> I avoided the sun so I wouldn't get any darker I tried to lose weight constantly, so I'd stop getting comments about my manly linebacker shoulders. I even straightened my curly hair with a straight up iron. Not a flat iron, real iron. Same one I use for this outfit today. <laughs> in school, in work, and even in my own home, I learned that I was valued if I was nice. My niceness was excusing, accepting, passive, careless, without boundaries. It was apathy. Being too concerned with being nice will have us valuing the comfort of others to our own detriment. Nice does not counter what it hears or sees. Nice is quiet. Nice does not rock the boat. Oftentimes, nice can be disingenuous, right? 
a smiling face with hurt, irritation, and anger just bubbling beneath the surface. I was apathetic, just posing as nice. Our inability to deal with discomfort means that our difficult emotions are something to rid ourselves of. So I ignored my migraines, my lack of energy, the constant clenching of my jaw and fists for over a decade. I began to practice mindfulness meditation in order to change my mind, but not to be less anxious or depressed or to figure out the source of my suffering, but so I could focus on what truly mattered at the time. <sighs> How can I be like these women on Instagram? Beautiful, fit, wealthy, healthy, perceivably the happiest women on the planet. Not for my own health, but for my desperate need for acceptance and belonging. Although my mindfulness meditation did help me with my shallow weight loss goals, something even more revolutionary was revealed to me. The parts of myself that I silence with my apathy, my depression, and my rage the roots of my suffering. In my practice, I tapped into how my body felt, the actual sensations in my body. <sighs> Heart beating fast, heat rising, tingling in my face. This is rage. Being a witness to the sensations in my body grew some distance, so I had time to notice the feeling the thought, and my reaction. So I had the consciousness to make better choices instead of automatically just numbing out by scrolling through social media or stonewalling my go-tos, I got curious about why rage was here and what my rage was trying to protect. Come to find out, it was my humanity. Our bodies are wise. Mindfulness is a kind and curious awareness that helps us relate to ourselves with more compassion. My practice gave me access to the emotional informants that were trying desperately to steer my life in the direction of well-being. Mind, body, reintegration, equanimity, back to my whole self. And that's my hope for all of us. So, I have a small, simple, short practice that I'd like to share with you that really helps the women that I work with reintegrate their minds and bodies and decrease apathy. So close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Now we're gonna do a little mental exercise. So on a scale from one to 10, I want you to choose something with the intensity that's like a five or six, not a nine or 10. Okay, so bring something to mind that happened in your life that was disruptive, unfair, made you feel upset and confused. You could think about someone cutting you off in traffic or something like that. And let your face truly reflect it. We're kind of in masks right now, so you could just let your eyes reflect it. Don't be shy. Open your eyes, keep that face. Open your eyes and look to the person next to you. Look to the person on the other side of you. I like to call this WTF face. <laughs> your WTF face is your new behavior cue to reintegrate your mind and body, deepen your awareness, get some clarity, decrease apathy. I wanna challenge everyone in this room to take this inquiry a step further. Next time your face goes WTF, Get in touch with your body's wisdom. Take a mindful moment and try to answer the clarifying question your face is asking. Thank you.